Good morning. Today's topic is citizenship in heaven. Citizenship in heaven. I'll be reading from Philippians chapter 3 verse 17 to chapter 4 verse 1. Philippians chapter 3 verse 17 to chapter 4 verse 1. Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. The end is destruction, their God is their belly, and the glory in their shame, with minds set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await our uh, Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like His glorious body, by the power that enables Him even to subject all things to Himself. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm, Thus in the Lord, my beloved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are in the period of Lent. What is Lent? Lent is taking stock of our lives. Stock check. So we need to pause and check where we are going. How our life is living. Are we still following God? and abiding in His commands. We must be ready to take a pause and check ourselves. Just like a car, you are on a long journey, you need to stop and check your car before you go for a long service, long journey, and whether that's all the things are sufficient. So preparing for a long haul in our lives with God. We must have a long haul preparing for it. So Lent is pausing, checking our lives, our direction, and whether we, we can endure and go on, whether we are following God's commandments, focusing on Him, and moving along the same direction. Look to the end. We are going for a long haul. That's Lent. Now today's passage on Philippians chapter 3, Paul has encouraged us. He wrote to the Philippians and he says, Brothers, join in imitating me. Paul says, imitate me, imitate me. And keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. So Paul's encouragement that you have us to show you, you imitate us, follow an example. And in chapter 4, verse 1, he says, Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm, thus in the Lord, my beloved, stand firm. So Paul encouraged them to imitate him, and stand firm. This is our commitment. So in Lent, we will pause and look at our commitment again. First, we look again and say, are we looking to Jesus? Because Paul imitated Jesus, so he asked us to imitate him. So we imitate Jesus in the end. The same way, our other people imitate us, and are we imitating Jesus? If we are imitating Jesus, then very feel free, then he should be imitating us. So how do we allow people to imitate us? So how do we look to God? It must be the Word of God who has taught us. A lot of things that God has said is written in His Word of God. The Word of God is there, is there for us to always dwell upon, understand, and look into it. Because the Word of God is sharp. The Word of God is truth. The Word of God is perfect. The Word of God is good. So the Word of God will lead us to the direction of Jesus. So we imitate Jesus means we cannot forget about the Word of God. And secondly, Paul encourages us to look to your leaders. Look around the leaders. Of course, they are, they, every one of us have, a, have our own flaw. But if there are good things, why don't we learn from them? So keep 
our eyes on those who walk according to the example. So we look to our leaders. So in a sense that the leader will lead us, so we follow. The leader will lead us, we follow. Of course, someone says, you can follow the good things, don't follow the bad thing. And all leaders want to lead us good. But sometimes we have our own difficulties, so we cannot lead people all the time 100%. But yet, even though 60, 70, 80%, we should follow that direction. So that looking to the leaders is training, is modeling. So that is a model for us to learn. That is a training. Paul asks us, he said, he taught Timothy, Timothy looked to Paul, and then faithful men looked to Timothy, and other men looked to the faithful men. So each generation, we need to train ourselves, we need to train others, and we model for others, and others model for the rest. So it's our commitment. The first commitment is to commit to the Word of God. Second commitment is commit to training. And in all aspects of our lives, we need training. The third aspect is, it says, look to the end. Stand firm in the Lord. Because we have to endure to the end. Look to the end. All that we do may be difficult. Sometimes may be blurry. You know, if we put things so close to us, we can see the problem. We cannot see God. And so, but we look to the end, look to God. When we look to the end and look to God, then you will see things clearer. And then this problem is just the one of those kinds that have come and it will disappear, it will go, you will just need to endure and carry on. That's our commitment. Paul says, you need, during this land, it's a good time for us to check ourselves how much do we know the Word of God, can we improve on that? How much do have we been trained? Are we still been trained? Have we still been modeling? And how much are we serving? Are we still been serving or can we serve even more? Of course, Paul went on to remind us that beware of certain things. There are things that he says that for many walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Oh, then Paul says you be careful. Their end is destruction, their God is their belly and their glory in their shame and their mindset on earthly things. But Paul warned us. So these are the things that can distract us. These are the things that set us tangent away from God. So, so Paul says, you need to set up a defense mechanism. The defense mechanism is to look away from the enemies of the cross of Christ. Look to Jesus all the time. And there are times that people will distract us. And you know, Don't look at the distraction. Go Always go back to Jesus. But look away from the distraction. Look away from the enemies. Look away from those against the cross of Christ. What are those things? Lust of the flesh. Because he says that God is their belly. Their flesh, the lust of the flesh, the food, the whatever consumption that they have in terms of reputation, in terms of all these things, in terms of wealth, in terms of, you know, it's supposed to feed their, their body. And so Paul says, you know, defend yourself. So look away. How to look away? So instead of accumulating, give. So he says, more blessed to give than to receive. So instead of receiving, give. So denying oneself is a way to give away. Secondly, he says, the pride of life. Their glory in their shame. You know, all the shameful things that they do, they glory and they make it as though it is the answer. It is the good thing. Today's world is poor. Right? But Paul says, humble yourself. Distance yourself away from this pride of life. But how to distance from the pride then go to the opposite end that is humility humble yourself you know instead of gaining all the titles and reputation and things but humbling yourself by not ignoring these things as important you know be yourself just be yourself and thirdly the lust of the eyes they set their minds on all the earthly things their minds everything they, you know, the, the earthly things, they accumulate the earthly things. So for uh, the defense says, you need to discipline yourself. You discipline yourself so that you, your eyes will not see those things. And you will you know, see only things of God. Set your minds on things above, not on things below. 
So that's a defense mechanism. We need at this lengthened time, time check ourselves. Why do we need to do that? So where are we heading to? Actually, Paul already told the Philippine Christians, he says, our citizenship is in heaven. We are waiting for a Savior, the Lord Jesus, so that our body will be transformed, our lowly body to be glory, to be the glorious body. At the moment, our body, but we put too much emphasis today on our body rather than, you know, on the resurrected body, the glorious body. He says that will be transformed by the power of Jesus. That God has given him the power to transform us. So, but we set the reverse. But what God told us not to do, we do. So that is the reverse. So our aim is to citizenship in heaven. So we park our citizenship in heaven. That is where Jesus came and says, I bring the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has come to you. So we should be entering this kingdom of God. So the value of the kingdom of God is just opposite of the value of the, the, the earthly things. So the earthly things put on pride. The kingdom of God put on humility. The earthly things put on all the food and the money, the heavenly thing, things of you need to deny yourself so that you will get the value of the kingdom of God. The earthly thing says that your body is important, you know, but the earthly thing, the heaven, the kingdom of God says that your spiritual life is important. So Paul asks us, he says that, set yourself into the citizenship in heaven. And because the Savior we are waiting for has come, the Lord Jesus, he's a king of kings, Lord of lords. And our lowly body will be transformed our uh, this body will be transformed, will be like Jesus' glorious body. And that is called the resurrected body. So, it's not that we do not take care, but we don't excessively put all the importance and that we have no time for service, no time to do all things. And he says, your joy and your crown will be your honor and your reward in heaven. So that's the aim. That in Lent we are preparing. Paul encourages us. He says that you imitate me. He says, I look after myself, but if you prepare the way to go to that kingdom of God. So we must be useful here so that we can bring along people to that kingdom. It's not us to do nothing in the world, but he says that don't let the world capture you. Don't let the world grab you and bind you. When the world bound you, you cannot do God's work. Then you cannot do the things that God wants you to do. And the world will make you fall down in many ways. So he said, beware. Beware. The world is going to catch you. You know, he used the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. He will bind you. So, but you need to be set free by doing the opposite. How to do the opposite? Look at Jesus. And what, what did Jesus teach us? He says, the word of God teaches us to follow that word of God. You know, don't do against the word of God. The word of God asks us to love our enemy. Then he says, don't hate. The love of God asks us to love God, to love our neighbors. Then we, we don't hate our brothers. The love of God asks us to be honest and truthful. The love of God asks us to be just, you know, to be righteous, to be holy. So the word of God. So we practice and try to work towards it. Then is to prepare and see how far have we gone into that. So then, but we cannot do ourselves. But the Savior Jesus Christ is here to help us through His Spirit. He's helping us and giving us strength. He says, you don't unnecessarily too much conscious uh, emphasis on the present body because the present body will rot in the end but it, when you transform it will be a new resurrected body that new resurrected body is a glorious body and that one is yours and how much you invest on this eventually it will be yours but if you don't invest you will be so so 
slim and so, so small. Then at that day in heaven, Paul says, the, your joy and your crown, your honor and your reward is yours. All belong to you on that day. The, but this process is a hard process. This process is a churning process. This process is like a farmer who wants to see the harvest. But before he sees the harvest, the farmer needs to plant, needs to till the ground, move the rocks, move the, all the, the unnecessary things, and they need to plant, need to water, need to nurture, need to look after. You know, when storm comes, and when rain comes, and when drought comes, you need to take different measures and different actions to make sure these things are okay, are safe. And then he need to even there are people who may be enemies who come, the like birds, the insects, the animals, what a human being who come and destroy it. So he, he has to look look after. So his eyes is looking at the end of the harvest that he will collect those harvests. But now he prepared. He makes sure all the preparation is done. The we our life is like that. We need to prepare and make sure all the things that we prepare, then we will receive and re harvest that is bountiful. So that is what Paul has asked us in this land to carry on, to focus on Jesus, focus away from things of the world, and focus to the end. That's the kingdom of heaven and God's will for us. May the Spirit of God be with you. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Be with us. Ask that you bless us, you lead us, and you know that it's a long journey. But it is a worthwhile journey because if we begin now, we will know that we will reach that. We did not do it ourselves, but it is the Spirit of God who is working with us, walk, walking with us, staying with us, and being with us law the way. We know there will be storm, there will be drought, there will be hardship, and there will be rain, and things like that will come, and enemies will bring forth, but our eyes will be focused upon God and His kingdom and the harvest in the end. We thank you, Lord. Be with us. We pray that we will have the endurance to go on, the wisdom to choose God's word, and the strength to go away from the things of the world. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen.